everyone. Good evening to tonight's episode of Café con Gas. I am Cassandra, your hostess. Um, I am so excited. This is one year of Café con Gas, everybody. Give it up. Thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you so much for being with me for this long. Um, I am absolutely thrilled to be bringing you Café con Gas today. And as the corner, I'm looking at the corner of my eye and our flash may be out of date. So let me just make sure I can pull up these clips and then we'll go in one second. Yep flashes out of date so let's get this going anyways um i'm your hostess cassandra um cafe con gas is an episode that brings live dialogue on healing arts and diversity with our occasional guests today we have just an incredible guest joining us today in the studio who really encompasses all three of those topics um and he'll be with us just in a couple of moments um the incredible artist david flores who i had on my facebook wall for a really long time and also cafe cafe con casa's facebook wall um in regards to a beautiful um piece of art in holyoke massachusetts that really brings to life um something that i didn't know about but the fact that they are the most puerto ricans um uh, there's 45 percent of holyoke that are Puerto Ricans, and I had no idea that that type of presence was there, so I'm absolutely excited to bring um, David on to today's show. So while I sit here and deal with a little technical mishap, um, we're going to go over to our emotional check-in right now, and let's see, <clears throat> emotional check-in. I can't believe this isn't working. Of course, this isn't working on my one-year anniversary, but um, let's just keep going with it because this is live and these things happen once in a while. All right, all right, so today's emotional check-in. So what am I feeling today? I am feeling a lot of things today. It's been a long week. I was in Denver um, going to my best friend's wedding and I had a really incredible time. Um, I felt, uh, yes, here we go. All right, we're gonna go right over. All right, so I felt a lot of things in Denver and, um, I'm feeling a lot right now, so we're gonna go over to our emotional check-in, do a little PMP action, here we go. All right, so how am I feeling today? So I'm feeling really confident. Um, I'm feeling a little bit frightened because I have my technical glitch, but we're just gonna go with it. I'm feeling really, really happy. I'm feeling a lot of things right now because um, whew, I actually, in the past year, in reflecting on what I've done for healing arts and diversity, I've accomplished a lot, so I'm feeling a little traviesa about that. Um, but I'm just feeling very thankful and, um, you know, just a little bit, a little bit love struck, a little bit love struck with what's happening around us and a little bit, um, excited about what's happening with community around this area. So we're going to go over to, sorry, we're going to cancel this. Um, and we're going to go over, we're just going to like hop into what's going on right now. So, mas color, mas poder. I'm going to invite, um, David to do an emotional check in shortly, but, Really, today's episode of Café con Cas um, is about bringing together community and also um, bringing, to, bringing awareness on other issues uh, within the state of Massachusetts. And I have David Flores with us in the studio today, and I'm really excited to bring him on to today's show um, because we're talking about art, we're um, talking about healing, we're talking about diversity, we're talking about mission. Um, I featured um, his uh, mural, which I'm gonna pull up right here. Um, on my Facebook page and also I talked about this in another episode of Café con Gas and you can see um, it's a public mural and it's of a giant um, Puerto Rican license plate that says Holyoke and it's Puerto Rico it's the typical license plate that you'll see on the island um, to give a visual representation of the amount of Latinos that are there so I saw this article and before I saw this article that um, Las Respuesta magazine um, did Las Respuesta media did a very very excellent coverage on I was so excited to see this present and I'm like Finally, Puerto Ricans in solidarity, they're doing something, they're making themselves known. And then I come back from vacation, I go check on this page, I go check on the story because I really like doing follow-up and I realize, oh my goodness, public art ban. So what's going on? Um, so I, I, instead of going into the politics of what was going on, I went right to the dialogue and I went into my Facebook, um, I went into my Facebook and I actually wrote a message um, to the website and then David responded personally and I was really thrilled and excited to connect with him um, because I was really devastated when I came back from Colorado to see that there was a public art ban and I internalized this experience with a lot of disappointment. Um, 
And it also provoked a lot of fear. I'm trying to do something on Café con Gas, talk about healing arts and diversity from the punto de vista, from a boricua, from a stance, that it's not just a feel-good, do-good show, but I have some sazón, I have some rhythm, and I have some sass. And on top of that, I always think, you know, when you go to Puerto Rico, everybody's in the sala, everybody's in the front kitchen, criticando. We're really good critics because some of the world's best critics. Um, so I'm bringing that like full circle and coming back to talk about this public art ban because when I came back, I said, shit, um, we're being silenced once again. And I mean, we, the, you know, Puerto Rican, um, collective identity here in Massachusetts for a long time, I struggled with race and I struggled with my own identity, something that I also was hesitant, um, in bringing on Café con Gas because I didn't want to be politicized in my own stance. I was trying to seek people out um, for the show, and I was also trying to seek people out to talk about healing among minority communities. And it always becomes this polarization of, you know, are you um, radical? Are you for, you know, certain workers? Are you for this? Are you for that? You have to pick a side. And when you're so marginalized, um, it's really difficult to pick a side. At this point, you just think it's stupidity because even picking a side is a point of privilege and even picking a side becomes um, a state of privilege and also kind of takes away from the humanity of someone who is feeling oppressed. Um, I don't think um, when I was going through my issues of identity here in Massachusetts, especially when I was criticized for even saying honey or sweetheart, which could be translated from um, Spanish to cariño, I always used to be very loving and kind. I got really, um, I got really bullied and it really hurt on multiple levels. So to, so when I saw this article and to comment that and bring it together, it really evoked that personal experience and it really triggered a lot of personal experiences I had growing up here um, in Massachusetts um, when I moved here in eighth grade and forward. Um, so what does this mural mean to me? It means a visual representation of something beautiful and a collection, but also I immediately wanted David to come onto the show because I wanted him to talk about his experience and also invite him to sit next to me and talk about the collective experience of what's going on with Puerto Ricans um, in Massachusetts and across the country and also offer you some um, humanity to the story instead of just reading two-dimensional statements. Um, I invite now David, who's standing um, kind of right behind the camera, to come on with me and join us um, here at Café con Gas. So, hello, David. Welcome. Hi. Welcome to the show. Thank you so much for having me. Thank and congratulations you so on your one-year show. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah, so um, welcome to Café con Gas. I apologize. I have some pee in picture and picture in your face right now. Um, but let's just move this over. Again, we're live, so... Yeah, I'll take it. I'll take it on this side. Um, so, so David, welcome to the show. What Thank you. what brought you? What made you come all the way out here to Cambridge? What brought you here? Well, you know, there's a lot going on in Holyoke right now, yep. and um, it's 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 very thick in there, at least for me. Uh, so I, I I figured coming here, you know, having the opportunity that you invited me, yeah. uh, I figured it would be a good a good time to kind of get away and kind of really kind of uh, organize my thoughts and really kind of reflect on everything that's going on. So I I just definitely. Last minute, I'm like, I'm just gonna go and be on the show. <laughs> I'm so excited. Yeah. yeah, I got the call from, um, I got the call around four o'clock that David is actually gonna be here um, live in the studio, and I was really excited. And I just wanna give you an opportunity um, to really just convey to the audience who you are, because it's easy to Google Holyoke. Um, I Googled it. It's a wonderful small town, also, you know, where volleyball was invented and where there are a lot of Puerto Ricans. Um, but also kind of give you an opportunity to kind of take take the stage a little bit, maybe use your Facebook page if you want to, but tell the crowd um, who you are and um, also what got you into art and how did this, you know, how did this project start? Yeah, so uh, my name is David Flores. I am originally from Chicago, Illinois. I uh, grew up on the south side of Chicago, predominantly Mexican community. Uh, this community had very minimal to no uh, visual kinds of representations of Mexicanness anywhere. And so for me, you know, there was always a struggle. I never felt uh, respected. I never felt uh, self-empowered. Um, and, and this is something, you know, reflecting on, you know, I, I never was able to kind of uh, see myself in a, in a way that I could make change, you know, just because my, I wasn't represented in my own space. Mm -hmm. And so I moved to Holyoke about four years ago, uh, and, I, and I specifically chose to live there just because it was the only space that kind of reminded me of where I came from in Chicago, which is very, you know, urban, uh, a lot of Latinos, and, and so I, I felt most comfortable there. Uh, I've always been into art. Uh, it's just, just something that that just be, always been a part of me. 
And so when I moved to Holyoke and I noticed, you know, and I'll, I'll preempt this by saying, you know, in Chicago, there are spaces and communities uh, like Pilsen, Little Village, Humboldt Park, predominantly Mexican and Puerto Rican spaces that, that there's no question as soon as you walk in those spaces that they are Mexican and Puerto Rican spaces. You, it just bleeds it. It's everywhere on the, on the, on the walls, murals, sculptures, everything. Um, and so when I got to Holyoke and I saw there was no kinds of visual representations of Puerto Ricanness anywhere, this is, Holyoke has the largest concentration of Puerto Ricans outside of Puerto Rico, in, anywhere in the U.S. And so when I, when I, when I saw that, I'm just like, what's, what's going on here? You know what I mean? <laughs> I was like, so shocked. Yeah. I was so, I was like, are they, you know, and Absolutely. the fact that it's right next door, it was, it's like, you know, it's like you're hungry, the door's open, but you don't know where the egg is and yeah. it's right next to you, right. like that you could have eaten the whole time, but you're starving for it. So when, so it's when, hard, it's yeah. hard. It so was when, right there. So when I got there, I was just like, okay, um, and I'm also going to school at Hampshire College, and okay. my, my focus there is community-based design, so and specifically Latino placemaking through art and design. And so I saw Holyoke, and I saw no art, I saw no Puerto Rican, I saw no representations of Puerto Ricans. I'm like, you know, I want to change that, you know, and 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 I had this the space to do that, and and so I worked with this uh, initiative uh, that that kind of uh, allowed me to create this public art. Um, and so I created this mural. Um, Let's get it up in PMP yeah. while you talk about this mural right now. So I created this mural that okay. represents for me the, the Puerto Rican diaspora in Holyoke. Um, and, and you know, it, it's a license plate, you know, and, and, and people could just see it as a license plate, uh, a, well, a very giant license plate. It's eight foot by 16 feet. Let's switch this up. Um, yeah. It's on the side of City Hall right now. Um, and, but for me, this is more than just a license plate. You know, this represents an entire community. This, this, this gives a voice to, to a community that for so long has been repressed and, and kind of almost erased. Um, and so unfortunately, there's been a lot of drama behind this mural and, 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 and kind of the things that I've, I've kind of been striving for. Um, so I, that th those are the things I'm working through right now. Um, so let me preface a little bit for the audience too. So um, by by drama, there has been um, there's been political drama. Um, there's been drama with the placement of the mural, and there's also been drama on a recent um, public art ban that happened in very close proximity to the creation of the mural. In addition to some tension, um, you know, this is a mural that is really beautiful. It's very well done, but it's also in a space where I, we're, we were talking a little bit before the show in a space where there's lots of shamrocks in the community. So it's been a little bit jarring for certain people, um, which is, which is, which to me, honoring healing arts and diversity is a little bit strange, um, but is really happening in Holyoke and, and why why do you think that's happening in Holyoke? Can you explain a little bit about um, like what Holyoke is like? Is there any other is there any other Puerto Rican part of Holyoke, or is this the only object that's presenting the large population of Puerto Rico? Yeah, absolutely. So so yeah, so Holyoke, the majority of Holyoke residents for the most part are Puerto Rican, and and in the spaces that they reside in, which is known as like the downtown area, it's the flat South Holyoke. Um, the, again, there's no visual markers. Instead, you have these giant green shamrocks that cover the public streets to kind of, you know, show that, the, that you have this group of people that still have control over this, the, this larger group of people. Uh, and, and so kind of reproducing this kind of uh, notions of colonialism. And so, so yeah, so, uh, you know, um, so yeah, so I, my intention th through this mural was to kind of give this community a voice, give Puerto Ricans a voice, give them something to, to feel self-empowered. These are the things that I never had growing up, and so it was. it's always been my goal th through Latino placemaking to kind of give back to the community the things that I never had growing up. Um, and so... Were you surprised? So, you know, your intentions, I'm going to switch a little bit, I'm going to switch the shower now. Your intentions are really pure. Your intentions are really simple. Like this is something that you wanted to, you wanted a visual marker. Um, and I I read from our conversation, just talking and chatting on Facebook, you're so personable and you're such an artist. And were you shocked that all of a sudden you just became the central figure? You know, your name, your name's on the internet. I see 
you know, again, if you guys go and you Google the story in your own home, which we do um, often, um, you'll see that there's a lot of controversy. Has that shocked you being it? Because your intention is just to that, create art. Absolutely. That was never my intention. You know, yeah. this made national headlines um, and, and it, it, you know, varying kinds of topics like censorship of identity, yeah. uh, racism, you know, uh, um, just, uh, this public art ban, you know, and, and th th these are the things that have come out of, of, a, of, a, of a license plate, you know, that represents half of the community. And, and there really aren't that many other uh, visual representations of Puerto Ricanness. Uh, what exists is just kind of hidden, this in the same way that kind of they treat the community already, they yeah. kind of put them to the side. Yeah. And so for me, it was really important to create something that was very, you know, in a, you know, a high traffic area, very visible in a very prominent yeah. place to kind of show like, you know, Puerto Ricans exist here. Puerto Ricans can claim a space here. And so for me, it's really important to, to claim these parts of Holyoke where Puerto Ricans exist as a Puerto Rican space, because that's what they are in every other, you know, in every other way. And, and so people try to erase that by putting shamrocks and, and like all these kinds of, uh, um, these like, you know, uh, like European kinds of, of, yeah. of, of ethnic markers all over the place. And, and so that that's not, right you know and it's wrong it's for me that i see that as a social injustice and so the conversation has kind of come to that right now mm -hmm. kind of gone from this kind of uh, conversation of uh, censoring of identity which it still is you know yeah but but now it's, it's it now there's a platform to kind of actually create some change yeah and and so for me that's what i'm most excited about i mean again this was never my intention you know what i mean like i wanted to create you sound a, like he sounds like a hero yeah. in the making this is a <laughs> no. good american story like, like i wanted to create something for the community yeah. and, and and that's it to be quite honest and, and you yeah. know create a, a lot of things but there are people who didn't agree with that and and who saw it as too puerto rican who saw it as like wait you can't claim this space because it's our space and right. i'm like this, this is a very hegemonic the representation you know? <laughs> the representation is saying and and as we're saying you know in in terms of spaces i mean just imagine um for those of you watching you know you're watching Holyoke, you know you're you're imagine going through a town um there's certain towns in massachusetts i kind of have to pinch myself this also happens in other parts of the country yeah, but i'm like oh my gosh am i in like colonial gettysburg is this a historical reenactment because massachusetts really values history and I, I I really value history. Coming to this country and just being one generation here, my family really values history and really wants to be a part of a community because democracy is pretty darn awesome. Um, so this is a really great example of how you have this, you have these people, but you have, it, it's, it's like, you know, you have this giant thriving community, they're totally seen, but they're not seen. It becomes this really, it's it's a, an issue. I really liked your term. And when I said visual representation, I learned this from David today and preparing this interview and talking to him. That's a really profound statement. I really appreciate that because you're giving me the tool and the language to be like, wait a second, visual representations in my life may be my style of dress, or it may Absolutely. be like, I have a bandera, I have two banderas in my apartment. I have one in the my, in my room and I have another that's a painting in the living room. Um, so that's a really powerful tool, you know, this visual representation. So in this representation, also being an address, it, you know, you're addressed in the media as one person. What kind of, do you have people supporting you right now? And also, if so or if not, like what kind of support do you need to continue this movement and continue helping people? Yeah, absolutely. And, and so really quick, one of the things that people yeah. forget too is that Puerto Ricans are a part of this American history. Yes, yes, you know, yes. Are, are, are Puerto Thank Ricans you. are a part of Holyoke, are, yes. are part of Holyoke history. And so they want to erase that. You know, they don't want to represent that. But luckily I've had a lot of people in Holyoke, a lot of community members, uh, uh, a lot of, um, community i'll just leave it at that community members okay. who are on my side you yeah. know who who do get it and and who do want change you know they've lived in their long-standing residents of, of holyoke and and so right. they've gone through this for decades and and so for them they see this as like when they saw that mural many people said like finally it's about He's pointing time to the oh, computer. Sorry. no it's okay I'm just letting it because this is yeah. so incredible we're live this is we had the glitch but you know, the, as as David's talking, there's the mural supporting him through this interview so, so as well. People, yeah, so people see the mural and, and things that they've told me is like, you know, it's about time, finally. You know, because it's the first time that they feel like they, they've they've been represented visually yeah. in the community. Mm -hmm. You know, that, that where, where they where they claim a space, like I said, in every other way. And and so there are there are many, many people who are supportive, very, very supportive. And who I know will be there if if a, if a, if a any kind of a demonstration needs to happen right 
Um, and and also when I when my when I was going through the the, the time when my mural needed a home. So many people offered a space, you know, their, yeah. their public and private spaces. They wanted it in their living rooms, you know, they wanted it in front of their restaurants, you know, and yeah. they wanted it, they, people felt really connected to this piece. And, and that, that was my goal, you know what I mean? And so, so luckily that, that happened. Unfortunately, there's the other half who yeah. don't see it that way. Yeah. Um, and, and so most of that half is who are in positions of power, unfortunately, yeah. in the community. And unfortunately, some of most of them are, are Latino elected officials wow. who have been kind of staying mute on the situation, prefer not to not see this as a issue of race um, because it makes them uncomfortable. You know, it's not something that's neutral. It's not something that might get them votes, right. you know? And, and so they're picking their battles, unfortunately. And, but, um, but for me, there, there's a, a bigger, bigger, bigger battle that needs to be fought, and that's for social justice, for spatial justice. And that's, I, that's who needs to be at the forefront with me. You know, luckily I have, for me it's always been really important to have the actual community members who this is affecting be at the forefront of deciding what, what goes on these walls. You know, who, like what, what, what I should even do and how, more importantly, like how I can help them do it, you know, do it themselves. Mm -hmm, that's that's mm -hmm, more important mm -hmm, for me. Mm -hmm. um, but I, it, it's also really helpful to have, you know, people who are in positions of power, especially if they're already in Holyoke and if they're Latino, you yeah. know, like they have a, a much greater, bigger voice than I do. Uh, they have a bigger platform and, and unfortunately they're, they're choosing to not use it right now. Hmm. Um, and, and so that's been my biggest struggle. You know, it, I'm definitely, it feels like I'm at like a one person army, you know, and an uphill battle and, and it's, and it sucks, you know? And, yeah. and, and so I, I need help from anyone. I've been, tweeting, you know, like, t uh, tagging ACLU, NPR, you know, Fox, yeah. you like yeah. CNN, like all these people, I'm j I just need help. Yeah. Like, it, it, it feels like I'm doing this by myself, you know, yeah. and as much as, as, as the community has, has been there to support me, like, the, like, el pueblo unido jamás será vencido, you know, so the, the, the more people we have doing this, the louder that we are, the gr greater of a change we can create. I and so... It. I need help. <laughs> yeah, yeah you know? I definitely, I, I just, in the in the spirit of help, I will also uh, mention, and I'm just like juggling between these two shots right now, but the picture that we're using here today um, is from LaRespuestaMedia.com. La Respuesta Media and he also said the Latino Rebels have, also, yeah. have done a really great job. Shout and, out to La Respuesta Latino Rebels yes. in Puerto Rico en serio. Yes, yes, <laughs> Puerto Rico en serio, and además, um, you also have a live, what is, there's also, well, yeah, so the, the, the MassLive.com as well also yeah, had a little trigger bit. Radio yes. also has had me, and, and Fox News Latino has covered it. Thank yes. you for that. That's been so so helpful. Thank you to everybody who's doing that. Um, it's really hard to hear that you, you know, it, it's. Do you think it's a solo? Do you think you're solo? Is there any particular reason um, that it's been a solo a solo act for you, or has it just been that you created the mural? You got to take the you got to take the bread. You know, people have been repressed in Holyoke, not people, Puerto Ricans, Latinos have been repressed yeah. in Holyoke for so long, decades, 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 that they, they, a lot of them have kind of become brainwashed, you know, okay. and thinking that it's, it's fine to be repressed, you know, it's, you know, we don't need to like visual markers, you know, we don't need these things. Yeah. And for me, it's so, coming from a space like Chicago, where I, I've experienced the transformation within myself being in spaces that represent me, you know, wow. represent Latinos and, and, and makes me feel empowered. It makes me feel like I can actually create change and I can respect myself, you know, because yeah. before I, I was never able to do that. And, and so these things like have such a, like a, a transformative kind of effect, a very yeah. therapeutic effect. And, and so it's, 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 for me, it's crucial to like have every space kind of defined and, and, and claimed to, 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 some sort of uh, ethnic kind of community and, and so yeah that's just what i'm trying to do what has been growing growing up here have you always had um like this is a tough question to ask and i'm gonna have to ask in the spirit of um i'm gonna have to have a little bit of oprah moment and ask them like the confessional journalistic experience right have you always grown up puerto rican here in, in america or has it always or has there has it been complicated? So I'm actually not Puerto Rican. Oh, like, wow. <laughs> yeah, so I grew up in Chicago. I'm Mexican. My parents are from Mexico. Um, I identify as Mexican, not Mexican-American. I know yeah. that'll piss a lot of people off. Yeah. Um, but, I've, you know, it, it's, it's kind of hard to feel accepted into this kind of American ideal, you know, growing up as a person of color, specifically Mexican, specifically Puerto Rican. Um, and, and so 
yeah so so growing like i basically spent half of my life in mexico yeah so i you know i i that's another reason i consider myself you know mexican too yeah. uh or label myself mexican i should say yeah. um but yeah but for, for me like uh, uh we were talking about earlier in humboldt park in chicago this this uh uh, traditionally Puerto Rican space, you know, th there are more Mexicans who live in that community. That's the connection. So, <laughs> I thought the connection was just our Mexicans, yeah. Puerto Rican, but literally we have representation no, yes, right fine. here. Like, th there's a little yeah, more representation. Absolutely. They and, manifested. And so, you know, like, they work in such close kind of solidarity, you know, and, and, and there's a chant that, that uh, Puerto Ricans and Mexicans say to, to get uh, at any kind of a rally or demonstration is, Puerto Mexicano luchando mano a mano, and 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 we in Chicago kind of hold that really true. We're always there to back each other up. What's more important is like, especially the Latino elected officials in Chicago. The community works with them hand in hand, like yeah. we're right next to each other. They're at the forefront, making sure that things happen. The last time I heard about this representation, this is so interesting to me because it was truly. There, the history, Puerto Rican history also includes Puerto, like many Puerto Ricans who helped in the civil rights movement, many Jamaicans also who helped in the civil rights movement, um, always being, ha and I'm having this little teary-eyed moment, like, okay, I'm live on air, and I call the Mexican a Puerto Rican, but the fact that we're together, no, yeah. it, those lines are not distinct. That, that, to me, that, to me, is just such an incredible accomplishment, because you know, it's it's people helping each other in movements, and it's also looking at the greater movement of visual representation and saying, here's a community that needs help, but what an interesting story when that help gets politicized and people haven't awakened. How can they awaken? You know